Vintage Show, doing a pop-up episode. This is Black Lives Matter in the background. We're going to hit the transgender issue and the mask issue. Are you ready? This in the background is the beginning of an episode from an artist called Atheism is Unstoppable. We also refer to him as Roo or Kangaroo or Devin is his real name. Devin Tracy, I believe his name is. And he has some serious production value and uh, some decent takes. So this is a recent episode. He's on Censored.TV, which is Gavin McInnes' platform. And I just want to play you the open from a recent episode on Censored.TV. Then we're going to hit Canadian Justice, K.R. Davidson's show on Bell 5 right now and your other local cable carriers if you're still plugged in. If you haven't pulled the cord yet, you can find it on Bell 5, I think, and we're going to get into K.R. Davidson's conversation with Dr. Deborah So. But first, the open. At this precise moment in American history, the country experiencing one of the worst years in living memory, economic devastation, unemployment, environmental disasters, months and months of riots in the streets, hate crimes, damn near a race war. People are dumb, people are violent, and people are looking to do something to occupy their otherwise dreary and uneventful lives. And it's during this time that I ask you the following question. What do we need in this moment? What is the precise thing that we could add to this chaotic cocktail that would alleviate the situation and lead us on a path to redemption? I don't know what the answer is to that, but I know it's not Colby Chaos Covington. Oh, oh, who let you virgins in here? I'll let you stare at perfection since you're in here anyways. Spoiler alert, virgins. June 9th, I'm getting 10 pounds of gold wrapped around my waist. Fuck yeah, you are. Yeah. All I gotta say... <laughs> yeah, I'm just... I'm hearing this for the third or fourth time now because I've seen this a few times. Did he say J- June night? <laughs> I'm getting some gold wrapped around my... Anyway, uh, Devin Tracy has got some good takes and you should do yourself a favor and wander over to Censor.TV, drop your money down, become a subscriber because these guys have some serious... Serious good programming. <laughs> anyway, uh, I just wanted to lay that little bit on you. I'm not going to get into... Um, I've got a separate... A number of other bits that talk about the burning of America. And I'm sure I'll do more, but that's not really where I was going with this today. Oh, and now my alarm clock's telling me to get up. What, 7.30? I'm sleeping in today? It is. Why is my alarm? I must have adjusted it. It's usually 7 o'clock. Oh, yeah, I turned my alarm on the other day for 7.25 for a meeting. I had it 7.30 on Zoom. It's 7.25 EST in the morning. This is K.R. Davidson's show. It's on your local cable system. It's called the News Forum. Now, this show is called Canadian Justice. So the News Forum is the channel. Canadian Justice is the program. This particular program had Deborah So on it. And Deborah So is, as you can see on the screen, a former sex researcher. And this is the part of the program that I thought was great. Uh, was most interesting because, and I'm not even sure I'm going to do a very long show on this one either, but I've been saying for years, not publicly, 
because of the backlash that I get when I test these ideas on people. But for years, I've been saying if you help a prepubescent child transition to another sex or give them puberty blockers, you are a monster in that is child abuse. Why is no one protecting the children? So I do want to do a little bit of a rant today on masks and the wearing of the masks and the mandatory mask mandates that have come down from almost every level of government all over the continent. And I'm talking about North America. But first, I, so I have this argument. This is how it relates to mass. So I've been saying, as you're going to hear in a minute, um, that it's child abuse to transition a prepubescent child, to transition them. Not cool. So one of the first guests on CARE's new program here um, is Dr. Deborah So. I think I've got you up to hear this, so we'll just um, play it for you. Maybe if you can expand on him and maybe uh, uh, Ken Zucker's issue. Right, well, I'll, I'll start with talking about Ken. So I, I know yeah, Ken is also a former colleague of mine. So he is the world hot. expert on gender dysphoria in okay. children. Ken There's no Zucker question they're about talking that. about. And in 2015, and his clinic expert. at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health here in Toronto was, was shuttered due to activist complaints. And he... Uh, Ken has since been, well, he sued the hospital and he's since been rewarded over half a million dollars in damages include, um, because of wrongful dismissal and also defamation. But when that happened, so I wrote about what happened to him for the Wall Street Journal and also for CBC News. And when that happened, it really sent a chill across the field because other researchers and clinicians said, if someone of Ken's caliber is not safe from this sort of um, uh activists basically interfering with their work and smearing them and trying to destroy their reputation who else, who would want to do that kind of work because they're not safe either all right and then and uh, now when, when you're talking earlier you're talking about this this pressure to sort of align with activist uh, views and such uh, at the at the heart of it um, uh, you know from my understanding you I, I think the issue is holding to a traditional or uh, a biological view of gender at least in the trans issues we, we you know we we also have uh, professor Halitsky uh, from Brock University that um, had an issue with respect to um, a journal that he had uh, published on uh, uh, comments on um, diversity but with respect to this issue uh, uh, from trans activism uh, what's the tension point here from um, uh, a traditional point or, or biological point of view, I guess, of uh, gender? Well, the, the issue that they had with Ken Zucker's work and, and actually my reason for leaving academia as well pertains to the body of research uh, called desistance. So this is the fact that all the research literature that exists shows that the vast majority of children with gender dysphoria, so children who say they're born in the wrong body or they feel more like the opposite sex than their birth sex, when they reach puberty, they're more likely to desist and no longer feel dysphoric. They're more likely to grow up to be gay in adulthood and not be transgender. But saying this is a huge no-no in terms of what trans activists would like you to say. And referencing this research is considered very, very controversial. So their issue with um, Ken's body of work was basically allegations that he was conducting so-called conversion therapy for gender identity. Uh, so conversion there therapy comes for the sexual conversion orientation is something therapy thing. different. I do not support So this is how they muddle, muddy the waters and muddle and muddy the issues on an argument basis is by saying, well, if you support this That's kind of research, then you must be engaged in conversion therapy. Listen. No one. Huh. Excuse me one sec. Bless me. That was a. <laughs> that sneeze, sneeze almost moved my drum kit. Whew. No one is trying to convert the gay to straight. Stop it. 
and stop telling me that if my three-year-old child rolls up and wants to wear a dress, that I should take them for counseling immediately, put them on puberty blockers, or to help them transition to the opposite sex. Are you fucking kidding me? Stop sexualizing my kids. I don't have any children yet. It still might happen. Who knows? <laughs> but I love kids. And I respect them way too much to let you ruin their lives with tranny what do they call it what's the story time for the grade three students where are they doing that drag queen story hour that's it yeah i don't need my kid being taught by a cross dresser why why do the why does the left not want to protect children why do they turn a blind eye to all this pedophilia and the sexualization of children? It seems like the right's the only ones that care about the kids. I don't know. Fuck. The left is just, they're sick. What can I tell you, man? All right. So that is a great show. You can find that on your local channel, your uh, local cable networks. And, um, Canadian Justice is the program. The News Forum is the channel. And I'd highly recommend that, you ch as Mark Dice would say, check it out. Speaking of checking it out, why don't we check out some daily deaths in Canada? This is the daily death graph. Uh, one of them, I use world meters. Um, I don't know. Every Everyone else seems to use it. So it's good enough for them. It's good enough for me. What happened? Oh, here we go. Okay, so there's a better picture. Of, uh, no, I don't want new daily cases. The see daily deaths. This is the important graph here. We are down here. Daily deaths. September 23rd, 9. September 24th, 6. Okay, this is where we're at. 11. Okay, now keep in mind, I don't need to tell you how they pad the stats for daily deaths, but these numbers, oh, I better get, I better wake up really for real this time. Look at these daily deaths. Since, let's say, yeah, we had a little spike there. Let's, even if we went to here, okay, July 18th. Yeah. Uh, dudes, it's almost October. And this whole time, this is the amount of deaths that are, we are seeing in camp. Don't get me wrong. I'm not insensitive. Obviously, I just did a little bit on who should be protecting our children. I'm very sensitive, actually. But here's a couple days. <gasps> No deaths? Wow. There's almost... Well, let's see. If you go by these stats, September 3rd, there were six deaths, and then there wasn't another recorded death until September 8th. I don't know where they're getting the data from. Here's the peak in here. In Canada, like, what are we doing? I officially know more people that have killed themselves than have actually contracted COVID. I know personally, not personally. Personally, I know no one that has contracted COVID. I do have a friend of mine in the States that I engage with on Twitter and she is still suffering from COVID, still unable to not go back to work, to go back to work. Uh, she thought she was better. The, f the fever broke, but she's got some really, really serious health conditions now because of it. That's the only, and she's in Johnson City, Tennessee. 
Anyways, I think that this data leading to this fascism is unreasonable, unnecessary, unwarranted. How many more uns can I put in there for you? Unhealthy? A friend of mine came over the other day. I interviewed Sandor. I can't remember how to say his last name. Sandor is the uh, very vocal anti-mask campaigner activist in Niagara. Sandor came in, gave me, I don't know, about an hour of his time talking about why this was important to him. It's important to him because he gets a, he's got a five-month-old baby boy, a beautiful, handsome, joyous, laughing, giggling, spitting comedian, a, just a little fart knocker, like so beautiful. I got to meet that five-year-old boy at the end of my driveway when I walked out, walked him out after the interview, and I met his wife. I won't give you his name. doesn't matter. I've said it before, I think. But he, kids love me, first of all. But he reacted to me immediately, like most kids do, because I give them attention. I don't talk to them like babies either. I talk to them like they're almost adults, most of them. Like the young kids that can understand, I talk to them like a real human being, all of them. I don't get down and goo goo gaga with them. So, upon meeting this child and upon experiencing the love and comedic, the face, the smile, the gooey gag, the, you know, he was giggling and laughing in my face, breathing all over me, spitting on me. <laughs> and he was adorable. And I love the kids. So, Sandor... This kid is Sandor's why now. It's his reason to do anything. And so at five months old, Sandor made the point to me. He said, with a seven-month facial covering mandatory bylaw in place, my child will not see a human, in, you know, a smile I mean, I guess the, some expression could be conveyed through the eyes, obviously. But the lower half of your face being covered up, especially your mouth for lip readers or for children, that mind is developing, <laughs> especially for the first two years, this child is not going to see a human expression, a smile in public by the time he's well over a year old. Or no, seven, five, yeah. <laughs> now, I think, number one, we often forge ahead without consideration for the impact of our actions. We're humans, we do that in our personal life, and we do that as a collective. I think we're headed into a mass ex human experiment, a mask human experiment. And I don't think that we understand what covering our faces is going to do to us long term for this. So, it put it in perspective for me uh, very well because that kid's human development is important to me. It's not my kid. It's still important to me. And if he struggles, listen, the first, when you're, when you're a newborn, it doesn't take a, I'm not a rocket socket surgery. 
<laughs> I don't do rocket surgery, okay? Um, but I'm not stupid. And <laughs> sometimes I get caught up in, in my words and then it, it farts my brain. <laughs> I can't even... <laughs> Can't even remember where I was going with it. <laughs> Putting masks on children is child abuse. Okay. Uh, wash your hands. Keep your distance. Clean your doorknobs. And flatten the curve. Oh, 15 days to flatten the curve. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Sandor, for coming in. It was great to meet your son. And uh, I, I love the fact that he's your why now. And it, you made a difference for me, Sandor, because you really put it in perspective how this could be mentally challenging for many that are trying to make it in a really weird time of lockdowns and shutdowns and all this kind of stuff. So thanks. So we know that this is an infectious disease. If it was as deadly as it is infectious, we would have a serious problem. If it was even half as deadly as it is infectious, I mean, wow, we would have a, it would be a big deal. But I'm not sure that it's any more contagious or infectious than, uh, well, I don't know, the common cold. And some things I just know to be truth. And I can't really remember where I got my data from, similar to, you know, what I just showed you here. My take has always been, you know, let them reach puberty because they're just kids and as it turns out the foremost sex researchers in the world agree with me <laughs> and coming back to this I've always held the belief that if you were in an elevator with an infected uh, someone that was infected with the common cold and they were hacking and sneezing and coughing and uh, I guess spewing the virus into the air that unless you were like laying on your back with your mouth and eyes wide open and they were coughing and sneezing and droplets were falling into your eyes. <laughs> In other words, if you were standing next to a sneezing, coughing, per, it, trapped in an elevator for a significant period of time, as long as you don't touch them, kiss them, touch something else that they touched, your chances of getting the cold, the common cold, from an aerosol infection, is that what you call it, are almost zero. So I don't, don't ask me to produce the data on this, but it's highly, highly, highly unlikely that you're going to get it unless they touch you or you touch something that's infected in that room. Getting it by breathing the air just by standing inside a closed, it just, it doesn't happen. This human transmission has been perpetuated and uh, perpetuated. Yeah, it's, yeah, by human touch for the most part. Now, you can see out there articles saying, well, no, it's the, the transmission is, is, uh, through droplets okay m maybe a small percentage of infections are from droplets in the air i can't prove that it's not and maybe at some level those filthy face diapers that you're using are helping those droplets get caught in there and not fall to the floor like they normally would in s fractions of seconds these things don't float around in the air for hours you losers droplets the virus is supposed to ride on droplets or phlegm, I guess. 
They don't fly in the air for long periods of time. They go to the ground. You can't tell me that people are getting COVID by walking by someone. It's not real. (laughs) I see people taking six meters on a sidewalk outside wearing a mask. Would you fuck off? (laughs) I'm not falling for it. So that is a long-held belief of mine. Keep your hands clean. Don't touch surfaces that other people touch. Common surfaces like the escalator handrail, like elevator buttons, like the toilet handle. Unless you're washing your hands immediately because the you have a proclivity to touch your face. Your nose, your ears, your eyes, your mouth, all places of infection if you're carrying it on your digits. Why do I have to be the one to fucking talk to you about this, man? Well, because I had a mask experience the other day until I got a a shield. These people, like I wore, I tried to wear a mask at this health appointment that I went to, a doctor's appointment. Let's see a specialist for my hearing. Try and get rid of this freaking tinnitus, whatever they call it. It's not, it's not fun. It's driving me mad in some cases. And I tried to wear their mask in the waiting room. I just figured for this, this time, okay, I'm going to a specialist, whatever. I didn't resist for whatever reason, because they set me up on the phone. They said, oh, no, you're going to wear a mask. So I didn't resist. I took their mask, and they brought it out in a box, and it was this big cloth. It was like, it was thick. It wasn't one, and not only that, it's reusable. A hundred other people have been fucking putting this on. I don't care if it's been washed. It didn't smell fresh. Bring me a fucking new, brand new disposable mask. You want me to wear your fucking mask, okay? Anyway, they threatened to throw me out because I was holding the mask. I couldn't, like, I really find it hard to breathe with a fucking piece of cloth on my face. Hello? Steams up my glasses, and I don't like CO2. I don't like, listen, your body expels waste. You shouldn't have to soak in it. Anyway, she threatened to throw me out because I was holding the mask away from my nose to let the my CO2 out, my exhaust my waste product you know the stuff that your body gets rid of when it doesn't need it anymore yeah, that and she came out from behind her desk and said james we're gonna have to rebook you if you don't wear your mask properly i said i'm having a hard time breathing with it <laughs> i have chronic bronchitis I don't wear masks. Oh, well, you didn't say that. I said, well, I'm trying to wear it. And she huffs and she storms out of the waiting room. She says something. I didn't get what she said. She came back with a shield. Here, would this help? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it would help a lot. And it was fine. Yeah, at least the CO2 is going out. Yeah, I see my shield steamed up a little bit one time or whatever, but... Yeah, much better. At least the CO2's not like in, like covering my face. What the fuck? And it was thick. You know, it was probably homemade. Somebody probably said, oh, you know what? Their mother works there or something. I'll knit you, I'll make you a bunch of masks. They're gross, disgusting. We've been lied to. You've been duped, okay? That's the t-shirt I'm coming with. You've been duped. You know if you, you know it. Well, maybe you don't know it. You should know it. It's sad that you've fallen for this nonsense. The survival rate. Okay, so listen. We locked down the whole continent based on predictions that turned out to be way off. So let's just start with, we shut down the economy, we overreacted to what we thought was 
a death rate, a mortality rate of 3 to 7% was predicted. Turns out it's less than half a percent. The recovery rate from this virus is 99.5%. <laughs> the average age of death is still 78. For the longest time, it was 82. But after the riots, the average age of infection went down to 34 for a bunch of weeks. And then the way I understand it, and I'm just kind of watching things, the average age of death went from 82 to now 78 years old. That's the average. Do you know how many people over the age of 80 have to die to give you an average death age of 78 years old or 82 years old like a lot like a like like over 50 percent Jim yeah <laughs> something so they overestimated the death rate we locked everything down no one took into consideration the asymptomatic rate so now we know that 10 times the number of inf confirmed infected cases are out there infected and asymptomatic, symptom-free. Now, I don't know that we're even sure on whether or not, I would think if you're infected, you should still be contagious. But I don't think we even know if these asymptomatic carriers, and there's people out there with natural immunity as well, or maybe is that the asymptomatic? No, I don't think so. You could have the antibody in you that means that you don't get this. I think you can have that without actually co uh, contracting COVID. Maybe not. I don't know. The point is no one knows. We're doing the best we can, but we could have done this all with nothing but social distancing and washing our hands. I bet you if we kept the economy open and let people go to work and let people run their businesses with the idea that, yeah, you need to wash your hands all the time and keep your distance, six feet. In public, six feet. That not much would have changed. Locking down the economy, in some cases, increased infections. At some points, the most, actually, the most likely place for you to get the infection, if you're not in an old age home, is at your home, from your family. We were giving it, we lock people down and then they, we put the infectious back in old age homes so they can infect and kill more people that are vulnerable. And for the first time, well, not maybe the first time, but again, we're in a situation where we have a clearly vulnerable sector of society. What did we do to protect the elderly? Nothing. In fact, in the States, you know what we did to the elderly? We put people with COVID in the old age homes, not old people, young people to quarantine them what do you, do you ever remember seeing that video of that black guy beating up that old white man i thought it was a nurse i thought he was employed by the place no he was a criminal that had covid and they housed him in the old age home what do you call those places It's not cool, man. It's not cool. None of it. You've been duped. That's the t-shirt. Uh, True.tube. You've been duped. You've been lied to from the beginning. We've had the facts wrong. And no one's talking about it. Close the economy for no reason. We could have done this all with social distancing. Personal responsibility and hygiene, that's all.
I'm going to end with a little bit of my favorite music, uh, I think. This is Anthony Sweet. I don't think... I, this is my own video, so I don't know why I would get shut down. Although it's not Jim Fannin show video. And why is this cropped so badly? Let me see here. I have something going on. Why is this cropped? Oh, I didn't change this one. Okay, let's do this. Bear with me here, kids. Oh. Um, yeah, Anthony Sweet came into studio a couple times. He's been very generous with uh, performing. There's my crop. There we go. And uh, this is one of my favorite tunes by Anthony. Now, Anthony Sweet is one of, like, his his name is so appropriate. Uh, one of my favorite people on the planet, and whew, he can sing, man. This is Anthony Sweet, and I'm going to give you just a little piece of this. This is actually, this clip is on the Rock Our Town YouTube channel, which I have regained access to. I'm not sure that I'm going to post anything much more than just music there. I don't think I'm doing my interviews or anything there, but you can find the Jim Fannin show on YouTube in a couple of new places. Uh, I've got 56 subscribers on the new Jim Fannin show YouTube page. And uh, I appreciate my, uh, I'm not trying to rebuild a YouTube channel, despite the fact that I was actually making thousands of dollars at it, uh, which is more than I ever made at it before. And it's probably, maybe I've got the wrong attitude. Maybe I should just go back at it. But the plan is, is just to have True.2 broadcast. I need uh, probably another five, probably a thousand bucks invested in the True.2 website to get me to a point where I can live stream from that platform, not have to worry about being uh, censored with the YouTube bots and um, and get a subscription up. So we'll put a paywall up at some point when I got enough content and interest. Well, I got some interest now, but uh, we need some uh, some dollars. We need to invest some dollars in the uh, website to get that live. And I'm hoping to get that done in the next 30 days. Uh, I never ask for money, but if you want to support the effort and you don't have a problem using Patreon, page. Patreon. I guess I don't have to look away from the mic when I pop my piece now because I got a little microphone cover. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash free speech. Now, that's me. And like I say, I'm, I've asked for money so little that I've never had a donation at patreon.com slash free speech. So do me a favor. Slide over if you support the show and you like what you hear and you want to support um, the creation of a website that will allow me to broadcast without censor, uh, without censorship, then uh, touch me up at patreon.com slash free speech. And you can also PayPal me at real estate at teamniagara.ca. Real estate at teamniagara.ca. At PayPal goes straight to my account, and I've had two donations to that, two actually pretty significant donations to guys that just said, "Hey, I'm living in Europe. I like what you do. Here's a donation. Go check out my guy K.R. Davidson at the News Forum. The, ch the, the channel's called the News Forum. It's on your local cable systems, and uh, he's got three episodes up. The show is called Canadian Justice, but go check out it's right a brand new local TV station right here in St. Catharines, Ontario, Niagara region. This on the way out is just a little bit of one of my one of my favorite artists. This is Anthony Sweet, people. Bow to the genius that is. Anthony Sweet. Listen to that voice. Right on my feet, right on my feet. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I'm taking my time. I'm taking my 
my time The longer I run down the road The bell is so better they don't Digging my time Digging my time Digging my time Oh, for the grass Lovely shade of green right under my feet, right under my feet, and oh, oh, it feels so good right under my feet, right under my feet, and there's room right here, right next to me, and feel the earth. Remember the sun, if you saw good, if you saw good, if you saw good, Thanks.